All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and explain how the old throw joint system works. I'm just going to delete these animations from an old uh, failed take at this video. Um, so basically, um, as explained um, by a couple people now, um, the throw joint is a pretty basic system, right? You have a static object and you have a thrown object, right? And unless you... Um, Unless you use some crazy physics settings with configurable joints or um, some magic tricks with those kinds of uh, physics setups, you can't really throw anything in the game. That's just not how the game works. However, particle systems have a option to set the particle type to mesh. And you can set the mesh, excuse me, you can set the mesh to anything you want, right? And that makes this whole system possible. It's just a magic trick. The only thing that happens is that you toggle a mesh off and a particle system on, right? That's all you do. Nothing special, really simple. Now, I designed a system that you can switch between hands. And that's what makes it a little bit more complicated, but really not much. It's just duplicating the logic and reversing it for left hand. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and explain how the old system works. And I'm going to actually make a single-handed version right in front of you in a couple minutes. So the old version worked by making a container and the container had a spring joint and a rigid body on it. That's the main container, okay? And it had a parent constraint to parent lock. And parent lock is underneath physics locks, which is the object that is moved from left to right wrist. And it also has a rigid body underneath it, right? This, if you understand Unity, if you understand 3.0, and you understand how the system should work, you would know that this is way too complicated. This system doesn't make sense. Why would you have a parent underneath a parent constraint underneath a parent constraint? Why would you ever do that? You don't need to do that. And that's correct. Now, I designed this system in such a way that if you really wanted to, you could look at it like other people have and say, oh, wait, this is just a spring joint with a particle system. Okay. And that's fine. If you want to draw inspiration off that, that's absolutely excellent. I always love it when people try to figure stuff out. Um, and I get plenty of people asking me for help on it. And I help people all the time. Right? So I have no issue with that. However, I designed this system to be intentionally confusing. Intentionally convoluted. I did this such that if somebody were to copy my work directly, I would know. Because this is so needlessly complex. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make the throw joint single-handed uh, like other people have, and I'm going to make it right in front of you. All right, you guys probably saw a quick cut there. Apologies for that. Basically, I recorded this video once and uploaded it, and then I realized that I made a mistake in the recording. And I put the fix in the description, but I did not feel comfortable keeping the video up because I was worried people would watch the video and not read the description and would be misinformed. So I'm going to go ahead and re-record the section, um, the tutorial section. So basically, I'm going to create the throw joint, the single-handed throw joint, and I'm going to do it in front of the screen. And I'm going to explain every step of the way why I did things this way and why I am not going to do things in the way on my previous avatar. So I'm going to start off by creating the container. So we're going to call this throw joint. It's a new empty. We're going to right-click and create another empty. We're going to call this spring joint. And then we're going to right click, create a 3D object sphere. I am going to scale it down to where I like it. And then I'm going to click all of these and zero the position. So zero, zero, zero. And this actually looks a little bit too big. So I'm going to scale it down a little more. And then I'm going to make note of this size. So I'm going to control C that size. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to um, create a particle system. So effects particle system. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to thrown object and I'm going to change the spheres name to static object. And I'm going to go to this here and I'm going to remove the mesh collider. And then I'm going to go to the thrown object and change its properties. So as explained before, this system is literally just a particle system that follows a spring joint. And then whenever you want to throw the spring joint, it toggles the particle system on and toggles the static object, AKA the visual part of the spring joint off, right? You can see we added the particle system, but it's throwing particles everywhere. And that's obviously not what we wanted to do. 
what we wanted to do is spawn a single particle and drop to the ground, right? So particle systems have a really cool, a uh, couple of really cool um, properties. One, you can inherit velocity um, at the time of spawning and you can set the renderer to a mesh, which means that whenever you toggle the particle system on, it's going to inherit the velocity of however fast the spring joint was moving at the time. And then it's going to spawn a mesh. So we're going to change the renderer to billboard to mesh. We're going to change the mesh to a sphere. And you can see it's throwing out spheres now. And then we're going to go into the shape. We're going to turn it off because we want it to emit from a single point, which is going to be the ball. So then we want to go to emission, change rate over time to zero and then add a burst of one because we only want one to spawn. You see it's spawning one. So then we want to go to simulation space. We want to set that to world and we want to change the lifetime to 30. Copy this and paste it into the duration. And we're going to go to max particles and set that to one. And then we also are going to go to gravity and add 0 0.25. That's what I like. And you can see now it is still moving forward and we need to set start speed to zero. And now when we spawn it, it's going to drop straight. And you can see that the particle is pretty big and we copied the size of the static object before, and then we're going to paste that into start size. So now when you spawn it, uh, oops, copy it here and then paste it into start size. And now when we play it, you can see it's the same size as the, at the, uh, the ball. And then we're going to go into inherit velocity. We're going to set it to initial. So it's going to inherit the velocity initially when you throw it. And we're going to set the multiplier to uh, 1.5. 1.5 seems pretty good. One kind of feels a little slow, to be honest. 1.5 feels pretty good. Uh, anything higher than that. And it's really quick, but it's kind of fun. And then we're also going to go down into the collision, turn it on, uh, set the type to world, and then make sure it says collides with everything. And that's it. That's the whole particle system. So we're going to toggle that off here. And now I'm going to throw the or make the logic for this system. Um, actually, let me pause there just for a second. Instead of doing the logic, I forgot this is a spring joint. So we need to add the rigid body and the spring joint. Then we need to freeze position on X, Y and Z or freeze rotation on X, Y and Z. Uncheck use gravity, angular drag to zero and mass and drag both to one. And then what you need to do is you need to go to your avatar, go to armature, hip, spine, however your armature is set up. And you want to go to your right or left wrist, depending on which side you want. And then you want to add a rigid body with the same properties, mass, drag one, angular drag zero. And then you want to lock position and rotation axes. So then here you want to take your spring joint and you want to take the rigid body you put on your right wrist and drag it into here. Now, a misconception with the original system is that I use a parent constraint to nullify movement. So that way the ball did not lag behind you when you moved. That is incorrect. If anything, it makes the problem worse because a parent constraint actually limits your update rate. A parent constraint updates based entirely off of your frame rate. So the lower your frame rate, the slower it updates. So using a parent constraint for this system would make it feel actually more sluggish than if you just attach it to your wrist. I like this. Granted, it's not a very big difference, but I just wanted to clear up that misconception. Now, we want to drag the throw joint underneath the avatar. I didn't do that yet. And now here we see that everything is set up right. I'm going to go into play mode just to test it to make sure I'm not wrong here. You take the armature, you drag it around. You can see the spring joint follows properly. Cool. So now I want to position the spring joint. I'm going to go into orthographic front. I'm going to take the uh, spring joint not the throw joint, the spring joint, and I'm going to drag it up to my wrist. And that looks about right to me. So now I'm going to do the logic here. Finally, I said I was going to do it before, but now uh, the setup's all done and the explanation is good. So I can start on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my avatar. I'm going to go to the animation tab and create an animation. I'm going to call this animation disable and I'm going to hit record. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to click the static object, disable it, and then disable the thrown object as well. Um, I have a Q hierarchy plugin that I can just click here. If you don't have it, click on the object and toggle it off in the inspector. And then I'm going to create a new clip called enable. And then I'm going to paste in what I just had and enable the static object and disable the thrown object. I'm going to drag it over, copy, paste. 
and then I'm going to create another one. We're going to call this throw. I'm going to paste the same thing again and switch these around. So throw an object is on and static object is off. Excellent. So now we have our layer. I'm going to call this effects on yours. You can just drag it all these uh, animations into your effects layer. So I'm going to go here and turn off right defaults because that's uh, what's required. If you don't know what that what that setting is, that's okay. Just know that VRChat documentation tells you to turn it off. And as a little bit of an aside here, if you turn it off, you'll have to redo your facial animations, um, which can be kind of annoying, uh, but that's just how VRChat works. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave it on because I know that it works with it on. Um, I have a big issue with leaving right defaults on, but for the sake of this video, for the sake of uh, ease of understanding and to make sure it works with everybody, I'm just gonna turn it on. Um, and just know that if you use a right defaultsless uh, workflow, just turn it off. Works the same way. Anyway, I'm going to click on the first transition. I made transitions from any state to each of these. Um, actually, uh, sorry, I was talking while I did that, so I made a mistake there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag these like this. I'm going to take any state, make transition, and I'm going to make sure that transition duration is zero and can transition to self is off. I'm just going to clean this up. And then I'm going to add two parameters. One is an integer gesture, right? And then I'm going to add a bool called TJ enabled. Looks good. I'm going to click on the transition that we just made and I'm going to add a condition and we're going to do TJ enabled is false, right? Um, any state is basically a state that will forcibly reroute your state. So if I'm in throw and I toggle something off, any state's going to take over or rather, if I'm in throw and TJ enabled becomes false at any point in time, regardless of what state I'm in, any state is going to automatically say, okay, I'm taking control now, and it's going to force this animation to be true, whatever it's pointing to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a transition from disable to enable, and I'm going to click on it, make sure exit time is off and transition duration is zero. I'm going to add a condition, TJ enabled is true, and gesture right equals three. So what this is what this is doing is just your right equals three means finger point. Just your left equals three is finger point on your left hand. Just your right obviously is on your right hand. TJ enabled is true. All this is doing is saying, okay, if I go into my menu and turn on the throw joint and then point with my right hand, it's going to come out. I'm going to right click up here and copy transition parameters. And I am going to make a transition from enable to throw. And I'm going to paste both back in here. And I'm going to change just your right equals three to just your right equals two. Just your right equals two just this open hand. Same with gesture left. Gesture left is two is open hand with left hand. So I'm now going to make a transition from throw back to enable, and we're going to do gesture right equals three again. So all this is saying is, okay, I want you to disable by default because disable is the entry state. And then from any state to disable, I want to say, okay, if at any point in time I disable the throw joint, I want it to go to this trend, to this animation disable. And then for enable, I'm saying, okay, I want I want to turn on the throw joint. So if I, at any point, TJ enabled, and I point with my right finger, it's going to turn on. Now, if you find that a little annoying and you don't want to point with your right finger to turn it on, you can actually just remove this condition and whenever you turn it on, it will enable. Personally, I like turning it on and then using my finger, but it's up to you. And then basically, when it's enabled, we want to be able to throw it. So we want to make a transition from enable to throw and say, okay, when the throw joint is enabled and I open my right hand, throw, and vice versa. When the throw joint is enabled and my right hand is finger pointing, I want it to go back to being a spring joint. Simple. <clears throat> and again, if you understand 3.0 and you understand um, the way Unity works and these animations and what they do, and you understand the basic concept, you would understand that you don't need to do any special crazy animations. You don't need multi-frame animations. You don't need any uh, crazy layers or any crazy hierarchy. Um, if you just look at the at the uh, idea of a throw joint, um, you don't need to copy my work. This just makes sense and it works. So just to prove that it works, I'm going to hit the play button because the layer is already dragged on the avatar. I'm going to go to the scene view so I can move the avatar around. Now I'm going to click on my avatar and you can see that it's uh, selected here. There's a blue line, uh, which means that I'm on the animator layer and I'm going to hit gesture right equals three, which is finger point. And then I'm going to enable the throw joint. 
and you can see it's right here. It spawns perfectly. So now I want to click on my armature and drag it around, make sure it works. Now, because this layer is the way it is, the avatar won't be moving, but the throw joint will be updating still. So you can see it's moving. And then if I hit open hand, it's going to throw just like you'd expect. And it resets and it throws and it resets and it throws and it resets and I can move around and it'll go just as fast as I throw it just like that. And then at any point in time, when I turn it off, it's going to go from any state to disable. So let's, as an example, if I'm in throw right now, because I have this any state transition that cuts off any animator state, it just says, okay, if this condition is ever true, forget what animation you're on and follow my lead basically. So if I turn it off, you're going to see it instantly goes back to here. It doesn't have to transition from here to here to here. This is just the best way to do it in my opinion. So anyway, this is how to make the throw joint as simply as possible um, with the least amount of steps, the least amount of complexity and the most uh, efficient way in my opinion to do this. And again, this system is originally designed to be intentionally confusing and intentionally convoluted because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't copied. And if it was, I wanted to know about it. So anyway, that's all I have. Take care.